Well, it had to be To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird is sort of like, it's like the great John Coltrane solo on Giant Steps. You only get one like that. After that, you know. Look, when Frank Sinatra finished the singing, it's over, you know. Bruce Springsteen's done. You shut the stadium down and you just wait, you know, wait for the next guy to show up. And so the Kill a Mockingbird sort of falls in that category, partly because structurally uh, it's written with great simplicity. And essentially it's a story about a, a kid who broke his arm. I mean, if you had to say, what's the book about? The book is about, you know, if you had to do one of those one line summations, you'd say this is book about a kid from the South who broke his arm. find a Torah, all kinds of stuff. I read everything. I go to old bookstores and just basically buy them out. I mean, unfortunately, you know, secondhand bookstores are. I have books on fishing, books on water, even though I'm afraid to, to go on a boat, you know. I have books about television, television writers, books about the creators of, of you know, Yogi Bear and, you know, uh, Tom and Jerry, that sort of stuff. I read just, I read everything. I see music and writing as really separate, separate entities. I, I'm, I'm best writing just looking at a brick wall and just taking care of business. You know, I'm not one of these writers who needs birds fluttering and, you know, the, the sounds of the creek passing. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm a city guy. You know, so um, I don't mind... Uh, any super, I don't mind, I don't need the superfluous stuff. I just need uh, time. I wake up at 4.30 every day. I write for a while. Sometimes I go to the gym and sometimes I don't. More often I don't. And I just, I hit it until I can't, can't do it anymore. I used to write longhand all the time. And then, and then I started typing. Nowadays, I write in longhand for the first, you know, 40 or 50 pages, and then I switch to a computer. Part of the reason is my typewriter, my typewriters kept breaking, and the guy who fixed them, he was in the Flatiron building in Manhattan. And then he got moved, he got priced out, and, you know, New York changed, and I, I can't find anyone to fix them. I have like, I must have maybe 10 typewriters. I'm no Mark Twain. I'm, I am a, I suppose you could say I'm a humorist to some degree. And I try to, I look for things that are funny because if you can't laugh about it, you end up crying. Um, I love what he did. And I love the fact that he was always about the common man. And uh, I like to think I'm about that, you know. I'm not really part of any literary community. I don't really engage in, in the, in the, discourse of literary life. Why are you not on the grid? You know, I don't have a TV. You know, I have a cell phone and I have a computer. And I, and I Google things when I have to. But I don't do any of that Facebook and Twittering and twiggling and flickering. I don't, why? Waste my time with that nonsense. So if someone had asked me, if, I suppose the question would be, you know, why are you not on the grid? Because the grid's not worth being on. I think people should get off the grid. They should read books. It's the last pipeline to freedom. Just regular books with pages that turn. Not books that come from the cloud with, you know, Amazon. And the, no, I'm not interested in that stuff. I wouldn't be able to choose. I, I wish I could. I wish I could leave one of these mistresses. I'd have a lot more time. Um, I'm not that serious about either, though, really. I've been doing this so long that I don't need to practice anymore. I mean, I do. If I want to play with Wynton Marsalis, sure. But I don't want to do that. And um, in terms of writing, if I wanted to be, you know, Mark Twain, why would I want to aspire to be what I can't be? I can only be myself. I'm not really part of any community other than the community that, that raised me because I feel comfortable there. I feel more comfortable in my church in the Red Hook Projects than I do anywhere else. Although, sadly, I can't even afford to live in Red Hook anymore. You know, Red Hook has become, you know, the, the, it's been discovered. 
always wonder, like, what happens if you're sitting in your living room and someone comes and moves you out your living room and say they discovered it? Words. Words are powerful things. They move, move entire galaxies. Mm -hmm.